everybody, welcome back to Briarwood Kids Ask, a show where real students get to ask questions that relate to things they are going through. So for example, uh, we could have students who have questions about dyslexia or dyscalculia and the like. Uh, we are very, very happy here to have two special guests. We have Rhett, who's right here. Uh, Rhett, by the way, just learned that he's going to be the treasurer of the lower school. Yes. So that was a now, that was a big deal than that today. And this is uh, Marianne Nice. Uh, she is a speech language pathologist and reading specialist with over 20 years experience in K through 12 education. Marianne specializes in the diagnosis and treatment of dyslexia and related literacy disorders. She regularly provides professional development and consultation to school systems, both nationally and internationally. She consults to school districts on the development of multi-tiered systems of support models and the use of effective school-wide literacy interventions designed to close achievement gaps. She's been a speaker at several national language and literacy conventions to include both ASHA and IDA. Marianne comes from a long line of family members with ADHD and dyslexia. These personal experiences and insights have further fueled her passion for educational change. Um, and I might want to I want to add that I believe you're giving a, a webinar on TL, reading TLC soon, right? Like this week. Yeah, right? Thursday night on the diagnosis of dyslexia. Actually, Very cool. we have a couple of teachers that are attending. All oh, right, fantastic. That's we're excited. So I'm now going to get out of the screen. Okay, Rhett. Here we go. I did. So I'm going to speak loudly. So do I just say? Yeah, sure. So my uh, name's Rhett. So can you grow out of dyslexia? That is a great question. Um, no, you cannot grow out of dyslexia. However, um, the impact it has on your life can change over time. So many of the students that I have worked with over the years um, through their hard work and getting the right type of instruction and used to, and uh, you know, familiar with technology, using technology, um, they found that the dyslexia, the impact kind of minimizes over time for them. Oh, so wait, so wait, does, does having dyslexia make you a better athlete? Well, um, dyslexia wouldn't give you any advantages or disadvantages for, um, in being an athlete. So, um, one of the myths about dyslexia is that because students have dyslexia and maybe struggle with reading, they've been kind of gifted with other talents. But what we know is that dyslexic individuals have many different talents, and that's because of just the way they are and not, not as a result of having dyslexia. But there is a quality about dyslexic individuals that I have uh, noticed over time, and that is uh, many of the students that I have worked with over the years have really learned to uh, persevere through difficult times uh, and work by working hard through some of their struggles. And perseverance is, is a really important life skill to have for athletics or, or anything you wanna do in life. So, and how do you think having dyslexia can help or not help you with sports? Well, the part of the brain that um, is uh, has trouble with like language processing and that impacts dyslexia really doesn't have an influence on your um, parts of the brain that involve your motor ability or your coordination. So it really shouldn't have an impact on your sports. Are you an athlete? Uh, yes, ma'am. What do you play? Football. Awesome. I have a football player at my house too. So yeah, so your dyslexia shouldn't have any impact on your football. Oh, that's great. And does your brain look dif different having dyslexia? Um, yes, what studies have shown, um, and the technology is unbelievable now. They can really see inside a, a student's brain and see what's happening when students are reading. So students with dyslexia do have some different brain structures than maybe a typical reader. So yes, they're different. However, with the right type of instruction, hard work, and um, you know, working on these things early enough, your brain structures can actually uh, change. So in dyslexic individuals, um, there's parts of the brain that are under activated when they're reading. And then with the right type of instruction, um, we've seen before and after pictures of the brain and those structures that were under activated can be, become activated. So it's pretty, it's amazing. Oh, 
That's a how got four too. Oh wait. I uh, think I'm on five. I so. How do you get this dyslexia? Well, most people are are born with dyslexia. I mentioned that um, we have a lot of dyslexia in uh, my family on both my side of the family and my husband's side of the family. So because of that, our uh, children and grandchildren are more at risk. So most people are born with it, but um, you can have an acquired dyslexia, which would happen as a result of like a, some sort of traumatic brain injury. Mm -hmm. uh, it isn't all that common. It's possible. It's not all that common, but I've only met... Um, one adult um, in my lifetime that I've worked with that had uh, dyslexia after having a brain injury. Oh, really? Yes, yes, it was very unusual. Um, and who was the first person diagnosed with um, dyslexia? Well, uh, this was my favorite question um, because I had to do a little bit of research on this. I wasn't sure who the first person was. So this was a, a great pleasure to, to kind of look into this. Um, so um, in the late 1800s is some of the first documentation on um, patients with dyslexia. And it's not that they didn't have it before then. It's just this is when we were kind of seeing some of the emergence of that documentation. So there was a gentleman um, named Dr. Pringle Morgan who described a young boy named Percy. Um, and it, this was sort of the first student that was um, diagnosed with dyslexia. He noticed that Percy was very, very intelligent. Um, when he was with his peers in school, he, he could do everything they could do. He's just as intelligent as they were, but he had, had not yet learned to read. And so that uh, Dr. Morgan was the first person to kind of write this case study down for other people to learn from. Oh, uh, and what is a good job for someone with dyslexia? That is a great question. Um, I think I think when you're thinking about a career and things you want to do after you get out of school, you should always start by thinking about what your personal strengths are. And um, as I mentioned earlier, many dyslexic individuals have, have strengths in lots of areas. So there isn't like one perfect job for a dyslexic individual, but my son is in college and he has ADHD. And so I'm thinking about his career. We're thinking about always start with what you're good at yeah. um, and what you're really passionate about. And then don't let, you, you would never want to have uh, dyslexia hold you back from doing anything. Um, so that quality of perseverance that I mentioned earlier, uh, there's a great book about perseverance called Grit by Angela Duckworth. It's fantastic, but um, you know, don't don't let don't let any kind of a learning disability hold you back. But generally speaking, I would always start with your strengths and kind of think about what you're good at and what you would could see yourself doing for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And I don't have any more questions. Great. All right. Well, I want to thank. Great. <laughs> yes, I want to thank both of you for giving us your time. Rhett's missing a little bit of his recess to be here, so we're very grateful. Oh. Very grateful for, for you attending as well. It's yeah, nice. but get out there and throw the football around. That's yeah. right. That's right. Thank you very much. And uh, until next time, we'll have the next episode coming out next month. Uh, Briarwood Kids Ask. And so, thank you very much. Thank See you, you next time. Thank Bye. you. Bye. My pleasure. Bye. Bye.